In this video, I'm gonna show you how to salvage the fuse assembly from one of these bad boys, a used one, um, to make a pretty formidable device. Formidable indeed. Here we go, let's do it. This video is going to show you how to essentially rearm fuses for any of these mousetrap style devices, including this molded replica of essentially an M201A1, which is the assembly, fuse assembly on the M18s, and the M228, which is probably the most common inert fuses that you can obtain uh, as like replicas. Um, I'm not going to show how to do it with those in this video and be familiar with the ATF's laws, federal law and your state and local laws, obviously be familiar with the definition of a destructive device and understand particularly the November 3rd memo, November 3rd, 2023 memo from the ATF. It's very misunderstood. People think that it bans smoke. It does not. It only banned a specific table, which was on page three, table one, as a specific list of devices. All right, that's one thing to be familiar with. Um, this technique does not transfer over to fragmentation because, uh, yes, it is illegal, but more importantly, the way that these are made with this is Chinese time fuse. This is firework fuse. It is not a gasless fuse. Those kind of fragmentation use specialized fuses that do not off-put excessive amounts of gas because the gases are what ignite things, ignition gases, right? So anyway, I'm going to show you how to make a, a really cool fuse assembly, how to reinvigorate these little toy fuses that are made of plastic. And what we'll do is we'll start with this. This is quarter inch time fuse. It is essentially almost all time fuse that we can buy is Chinese replica of Japanese time fuse. The Japanese fuse is generally higher quality. Um, this one is from pyrocreations.com. Um, Skylighter also sells a pretty decent time fuse. However, the core the powder core of the Skylighter fuse is much skinnier and therefore as the fuse comes out it's going to require a primer as it ignites a secondary fuse. Either way, one thing I am doing for this video, which is new, is essentially every single question that you could possibly come up with I have answered in the documents on my website. So I put a database well I'm I started a database of documents which you'll see you know whether it's where to get red phosphorus or you know where's the best place to find um, potassium chlorate everything that you could possibly think of I believe is going to be answered in these documents um, and what I'm gonna do is at the end of this video just before the final test of the devices that we do make I'm going to show a series of slides essentially that have QR codes and what you can do is take screenshots of each slide and some of those QR codes will send you to a, a video segment in another video where I cover something for example the composition of the smoke or how to make the smoke mix that we're talking about. And some of those QR codes will lead to PDF documents. Um, and anyway, I think it, it as far as um, effectiveness for making this video concise and also answering and having all-inclusive, savable information that can be printed out, for example, and put under your pillow, or anyway... So that's what I'm that's what I'm trying for this video. So wait until 
the end of the video. I know that's a scam that creators use a lot <laughs> to get you to watch to increase their video durations on their analytics. I'm telling you to just wait at least. No, actually, if you have a problem waiting till the end of the video, then you don't have the patience to make this stuff. So <laughs> that um, just before I test the final device. Wow, I'm sweaty. Ew, that's disgusting. Just before I test the final device, there's going to be a series of slides. Just wait for those, and then I'll say, okay, take a screenshot of this, 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 and this. Anyway, flip this this way. All right, so we're going to cut approximately a three to three and a half inch section of this time fuse. I like to cut with the grain, essentially, of the string that wraps, that binds these time fuses, uh, only because it's easier to cut. So that's at an angle. Now there's a reason this is at an angle. There's two reasons actually. One, oh, you can't see it in this fuse. You can see it in this one though. This is a cross section of this plastic fuse. This is cut at an angle commercially when they make these devices because the surface area at the end of this time fuse will have a higher probability of passing fire to whatever it's going to. We're gonna use a different method the reason we are cutting our time fuse at a diagonal on the top of it where it goes into this cup is so that it takes up some of the volume of this ignition composition inside of this copper crimp ring. I'll show you that right now. So we have a fairly, we want a, an acute angle here. Pretty, actually maybe steeper than that. Let's go like this. Okay. Now we want to cut the tip of this flat. Oh, well, that was just awful. Okay. Now we need to circumferentially cut just below the bottom of that diagonal cross section we did. And we're going to score the outside jacket of this time fuse. Then we're going to cut a vertical line from that score line up to the top of this. And now we will remove this jacket. And then this secondary jacket. Now the time fuses are constructed a bit different. Just remove what you need to remove. Don't remove more because you're going to be left with a freestanding powder core which will not bind very well. Alright, so let's see if this fits inside this crimp ring. We also need to make sure that this copper, I mean the, the powder core is completely exposed. Yeah, that'll work. So this looks pretty sloppy, but you'll see in a second it's not, it doesn't end up that bad once we clean it up. Alright. So we're going to use some CA glue, uh, the thicker thicker stuff is better. This is medium viscosity and it's pretty much like water. All right, so we just want to make sure that the the this copper ring is aligned with the outside circumference of the time fuse. We're gonna hold it for a little bit. Possibly get some activator. If you don't have activator, then that's okay. You just let it, you just hold it a little bit longer. All right, so now you see how this powder core takes up more than half of the volume of this crimp ring? The reason for that is so that we don't have, we don't end up with too much composition, ignition comp, inside of this cup. Because when we do, then this happens. And this happens. See what I'm saying? All right, so now we're going to gently remove this excess stuff here. I feel like this. Yeah, 
yeah, that's right. You just saw that. <laughs> I the 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 brand of this knife rubbed off. I have no idea what brand it is, but boy, is it my favorite. All right, so now we have this. The next thing we're gonna do is use the ignition composition from these kits I sell on my website, inventionincarnate.com. Don't worry, there'll be a link to that. And also, all the if you want to make your own version of this, you can. The information is on the website in those documents. But the the reason I made these kits is because it makes a very easy way for you to get all the chemicals you need in one easy place, particularly red phosphorus. That's difficult to get a hold of. And I'm just going to take a very small amount of this ignition comp. Nope, 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 nope. I'm mixing the potassium chlorate into the ignition comp. I'm going to take a little bit of this stuff, put it in the little mixing bowl, drop a few drops of... This is nitrocellulose lacquer. I think I got this nitrocellulose lacquer at Pyro Creations, um, but that's in the in those documents as well. So we make mix this into a thick slurry. I should say a thick a thick paste, and then we're going to push this ignition comp into this little crimpering cup, and we're going to just force it down to make sure it's in full contact with that powder core. Okay. Now we let this dry. It doesn't take very long. It doesn't need very much time to dry at all. Okay, that's dry. <laughs> so, oh no, not this one. This one is the dry ignition composition. The next thing we're going to do is flip this over, flip this inside out, and get a little bit of the striker composition from this kit. Red, red phosphorus strangely smells like farts. It's pretty gross. Oh, we just need a little itty bitty bit of this. So that striker composition we mix with some nitrocellulose lac nitrocellulose lacquer and we use this little brush here. You can also use PVA glue for all of this stuff. Elmer's Clear School Glue. Um, now, what I'll say about that is that it's better to use a highly vol volatile um, so solvent, or no, I should say glue. Um, it's, it's better to use nitrocellulose lacquer because it has an acetone base um, inside of these non-porous cups, these crimp rings, because I should get this a little wet to make sure it, it adheres. Um, the nitrocellulose lacquer has an acetone base, so it evaporates very quickly, even with non-porous confinement or containers, right? So I, nitrocellulose lacquer is preferred for reasonable uh, dry times. All right, so this fuse, once this is dry, it's ready to go. Oh look, it's done! Um, now what we're gonna do is modify this fuse assembly. We're gonna pull this time the the burnt out time fuse out of the core of this thing. Here's a cross section of this fuse, okay? Oh, get my needle. This is a cross section of what this looks like, right? We're gonna just plow, we're gonna drill right through the whole thing. <laughs> but first, I have to flip this spring back. Okay, now this gives us a clear path straight through this thing. All right. Oh, 
All right. This time for real. All right, see how that sits right there? That's so nice. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is maybe glue it down here. Nope, not this one. So this will get kind of blasted off. Uh, usually it gets the, the adhesive at least gets loosened uh, when it ignites or when it goes off in the device. You can reuse these fuses as long as they last. You know what I mean? Like, I don't. There's no guarantee there, but all right. So now this is good to go. So we have two different canisters, both filled with this HC composite smoke mix. This stuff is amazing. Don't worry. There's a QR code for a link on the very detailed instructions on how to make it, where to get it, all that stuff. This stuff is amazing. Um, so what I've done here is I've primed two visco fuses, uh, fast burning visco. I primed it at the bottom of the core and then also I adhered it kind of to the side of the mix. This is experimental. Um, I wanted to see how fast the volume of smoke would deploy with the fuse with an ignition source along the edge of the inside edge of the open core of these devices. This is experimental. Yes, I will dilate it. That's perfect. Nice. Okay, so I punched this hole with this leather punch thing, or rivet punch. Um, normally I'll prime these fuses here. Actually, you know what, I'm gonna do it anyway. With this stuff and this guy. And this guy. So the fuses can be primed with um, either a primer mix, which I'm gonna link to, or it can. Uh, there's a number of primer mixes that that'll work for this. Um, but the ignition composition also works. You'll notice I did not prime the last one. Um, so this particular time fuse does not require. I have found it does not require a uh, primer on a visco fuse because the powder core is so thick. This time fuse does burn aggressively in comparison to the other time fuses that I've used. Um, so that's from pyrocreations.com. The other one is... Oh, hello! The other one is from Skylighter. Oh, so he's at his unit. Oh, oh. Oh my god. I don't know, man. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shit, man. Um, crack that door closed a bit because the bugs are off it. Over here, they're real bad because it's, I'm next to the swamp. I'm not coming out of the sack, but I'm going to shoot it. Alright. Well, that's dry. is primed put that there I like to glue the end that is not igniting or that is not running to the composition so this is a an extra end that we don't that that doesn't really matter um, and I've also found that if we were to, to double up this fuse and to make a loop you know and to have two uh, viscos going down I it, it's a little violent the gas is released from the fuse burning because it's fast visco burns real fast, releases a ton of gas, and then it really is aggressive when it pops its top off. But that's what we're doing now, right there. And I'm gonna reverse spin this so that I can thread it without it completely going crazy. Alright. 
Yeah, there we go. Oh no! How is this spoon gonna fit? So there's that. Now, I'm gonna boil some water. Okay, so now, gonna take this bad boy and just dip it in this boiling water. It's at a rolling boil right now. When I was little, I was on a backpacking trip in the High Sierras on the John Muir Trail. Uh, it was like a week-long backpacking trip. I was probably like 12 or 13. Um, me, my sister, my mom, my dad, my aunt, my uncle, out uh, in near Yosemite, and we had a uh, my aunt broke her fishing rod, and she was so pissed, and I was like. I was like, I took a, uh, the, the handle of a toothbrush and I put it in a Sierra cup, like a, you know, camping cup, and then boiled some water on top of the f campfire we had. And she was like, you are not, that is not going to work. And lo and behold, I boiled it and then <laughs> was able to fit it on top of the Basically, she had a toothbrush for a handle on her reel, but it, it worked, and I was so freaking proud of myself. It was momentous. All right, so now we can hold this up to this. Say, where does this land? We want it to go. Basically, we need to bend it here. At that level. Wait, will that, where will that land? Uh, a little bit more. You could also add salt to this uh, water to make it boil hotter. And here's where the camera cuts out. But this is the shape that we bent it into with the boiling water. I don't know where this canister came from or what it is. This was sent to me by a really awesome subscriber um, along with some other stuff. But he's like, yeah, use this can. You'll need it for something. And um, yeah, so needless to say, the cap here does not fit on this canister. So what I'm going to do is uh, crimp it and then place it inside this is a um, downspout a downspout crimping tool so I'm uh, joining the time fuse to the fast visco here um, with a method that normally I'll punch it <laughs> with like a hole punch um, or leather ga ga gouge, leather, whatever it's called. Um, I'm going to do a different technique here, which is splitting it, the time fuse in the middle, and then tying a constrictor hitch around it. But what we can do is basically just split this fuse right in half. Oh, by the way, this time fuse is 2.4 seconds per inch, so you're able to de to figure out the delay that the desired delay that you want, and then you know where you just want the fuse to. You gotta leave a little extra to join the, these fuses, right? So I'm gonna tie a constrictor hitch with this black string on this black glove. Definitely learn this knot if you haven't. It's one of the most useful knots. Um, it's the, I end up I use this more than any other knot. The so majority of the time we're using knots is to to do it to attach them to some other solid object, not 
not joining ropes is uh, anyway okay so now just gonna put this here and then rejoin this time fuse and then loop this constrictor hitch over the time fuse probably should have left a little bit more time fuse there to mess with It looks like it. Ah! All right. Where you? I'll punch the next one. There we go. So the cool thing about a constrictor hitch is once you tighten it, it does not come undone. Especially if you put glue on it. And glue on the fuse a little bit there. Let's activate that. Cut off the excess because we don't need flaming balls of debris flying everywhere when this thing goes off. All right, and see how that works? We just kind of set it in here. Well, this is a beaut. Look at that. Holy crap, that's nice. Woo-wee! And uh, I'm just going to join this here. And there's one device. I'm gonna paint this and make it a little cooler looking. So this image kind of sums up what we did. Um, this is actually from those PDF documents that I'm about to give you the QR code for. Here's another one, which is how you determine the duration of time fuse. Um, but anyway, here are those screenshots. There's gonna be one right here, which is a link to a video segment explaining this smoke mix and then here's the other one this is the link for all of these different items all right now we go to testing I moved. These bullfrogs are the things of nightmares. <laughs> 